G'day and welcome to Market Sam After Work. Today I want to go through a little bit of the terminology on um, sighting or getting onto target. Um, now this is something that can be used in all forms of, in all firearms or, or um, aiming equipment, uh, but for I will simplify things and be talking about rifles and what we do, which is long range rifles. But like I said, can be used anywhere. Um, and for those that don't realize, yes, when it comes to aiming at a target, it isn't just a case of putting the crosshairs on the target or the sights on the target and pulling the trigger. In a rifle, unlike a laser beam in a, or something, but basically a rifle that when it fires something, fires a projectile, the projectile has to deal with both gravity and the elements. So wind pushes around gradually as it travels through the air, gravity pulls it down to the ground. So those are things that are always happening, which means if you shoot at different ranges, you have different points of elevation, you need to allow for that bullet drop, um, which is one of the bits of terminology, um, and in different conditions, you have to allow for different things. So there's a couple of ways that you go through that process of making those allowances. You either do that with data, so whether that's reading off the ammo and what the bullet's gonna, the ammo box and what the bullet drop's gonna be, whether it's looking on the particular um, firearm and whether there's indications on the sights in whatever form that tell you what meters for what, where you've got to aim to correcting on the target. So firing, hitting somewhere or other, adjusting according to that situation. So in those details to start off with, I'll go through a little bit more, but in those details, um, the, the main way to do this is in, and in talking about it to start off with, I mentioned bullet drop. And people use that sometimes as a reference. What bullet drop was there to get out to a certain place? I think a lot of people have that, and generally I see that question asked where people are assuming that there's almost nothing, or they, they think there's two or three inches or something or other at 500 yards and, and expecting that maybe 10 feet at, at 3,000 yards, and no, there's an enormous amount more than that. The bullet drop in what it's actually describing is if you look at the trajectory of a barrel, where, whether that's pointing slightly up or it's a long way up, whatever it is, the trajectory of the barrel, that dead straight line of the bore sight of that, of that um, where the barrel was pointing, um, if you take that as a straight line, like a laser beam, and then intersect a point immediately above target, so directly above park target, that there, that distance there is what bullet drop is. As said, if a projectile is traveling um, out a long way, it is dealing with gravity. And the basic logic of it is that, although there's some slight effects that can change us a little bit, the basic logic of gravity always is pulling at the same speed. So if you take something and drop it, as long as it, is, as long as it takes to hit the floor from whatever height you're, let's say with this, we've got this traje trajectory, you've got the bullet drop, that point, to there, if that's 100 meters, uh, which some shots will be up in that distance and some shots will be even further, 100 meters, if you had a projectile and held it at 100 meters in the air and dropped it, they'll take the same time to drop. This one that's doing this curve here and this one that's dropping straight down will take the same time. But that is what bullet drop is. Bullet drop is from the intersection of the, where the barrel's pointing immediately above target, that is the amount of the bullet drop. So that's the question you're actually asking when you say bullet drop. The other thing people say is what's your holdover? Now holdover is a actually aiming to a different place with using your sighting reference to aim to a different place. So when you have, and really holdover, I think a lot of people describe it when they're actually talking about using the scope settings. What they're actually asking is what's your scope settings? Scope data, whatever you want to say, turret settings, but when you dial up and you wind on wind to get it, the reticle to a point to a different place, and then you hold on target. So that's hold on, but it's using scope settings. So most commonly, especially when you see us shooting at long distance and people ask, what's the holdover? Well, the holdover was minute, little bits and pieces of me correcting down on target. What they're really asking, if you're speaking in my language, then it's scope settings. Um, turret settings, what did you dial on the scope? Those are ways to ask the question, holdover is not the way to ask, ask the question. Um, the other thing that people use, a term that I've, I'm hearing it used less now, but it's a term that has been used quite a bit, um, is dope. 
um, as to trying to be a cool way to say what are the scope settings. Dope, there is a couple of definitions, but the one I stand by, the one that I use, and I don't often use this because it's a little bit tangled up, but that is data of previous engagement. So if you're asking someone what their dope is, it's what's the scope settings that they used from a previous engagement. Not this one, from a previous engagement. So when you ask someone, what's your dope? Um, to me, it's really a bit of a dopey question because it doesn't really say what you're trying to say. It's asking something else. Once again, scope settings, scope data, turret settings. Um, what did you dial on the scope? Ways to ask that question. What's the dope is really talking about, like I said, it's a little bit of a mishit, that one there, but you get where I get where they're coming from. We come back to the, um, the holdover. What is holdover? Well, holdover is exactly what it sounds like. If you have, and you can do this with iron sights, or you can do this with, with scope sights, I can to image it easier for you here. Um, and this is basically, I'll start this little image here that's hold on, fire the shot. You see the shot goes to a, misses the target. Now we'll use holdover. If we raise the reticle up, that's hold over, and you see the crosshairs, the actual center point of the crosshairs are then lifted above the target, and then we'll allow for wind, so we'll hold for wind. So there's our wind hold, where we go to the side. You'll notice for people who um, are learning about this sort of thing, is that the, the scope hold point is actually taken to where that same place in the scope where the projectile hit, is in that scope image that's transferred onto the target and that is basically how holdover works and that's what holdover means too in actual fact you can have holdover which means you've got your crosshairs above the target point you've got hold hold under so that is a term that i use as well so that is when you've got something sighted for further away and you're trying to shoot closer than that then you hold under you push the crosshairs under and then you've got your wind hold. I don't tend to use, there's the full value and, and all the wind values like that. I, simp I simplify it, I don't try and go through those references. I simply go with whether it's one MOA or two MOA or one mil or whatever it is, and I tend to do it in the reference like we're talking about. I suppose actually what I do in a simple form is I, if I have the opportunity, I will dial. So I'll put scope setting in settings in to allow for everything I can. And then I, my holdover points or my hold points are just moving around the target. If I just miss to the left hand side, then I'll hold on the right hand side and I'll shoot there to try and make my corrections that way. Um, if I'm just going underneath, I'll hold the top edge. Once I get to holding more than a target away from my shooting from my area, I'd prefer to adjust, but it depends on what you're dealing with. With rapidly changing conditions, you do go to hold points. And of course, holdover really comes from, this is Kentucky windage is a, an old term to try and describe that you're not d directly aiming at target. Yes, totally, with iron sights and that type of thing, and that's exactly what you're using. We have, in some places, you have the likes of um, a very um, simple ladder, site, ladder sites that will give us our elevation points to be able to change there. But the moment you're allowing for wind, then you tend to be using a fair bit of Kentucky windage or a fair bit of wind hold and aiming to the side of things to allow for your wind because you're using, and that's another, simply a way of using the holdover reference, or it's actually a wind hold in that place, but it's using it correctly there. So listen, that's basically all I wanted to get into when people, when the term holdover is describing that. It is describing you're holding the crosshair off the target in some form or other. The true holdover is holding the crosshair above and then hold under and then wind holds. But any holdover actually, the moment you're holding off, holdover is a reference that can be used. And holding on, in my way of using that, is means you've got your crosshairs on the target. Um, when it comes to dope, like I said, data of previous engagement, if you come to scope settings, turret settings, scope data, um, <laughs> what, what's dialed into the scope, scope dial even be a way of saying that which makes sense to that sort of things. Dope, not so much, like I said, scope settings is what I use, but that's, that's a, a definition which has some moving parts to it. Um, and if we come back down to the bullet drop and what you're expecting there, um, 
Yes, it is. Like I said, that the, the laser beam out of the barrel, that intersection above target is what your bullet drop is. And it's a lot more than people think. The moment you start counting how many seconds it takes or how much distance gravity takes a projectile over a... Um, over X amount of time, so the, if you see an eight second shot, think how far up in the air you've got to take something to let it drop for eight seconds. That's roughly your holder, that's roughly, sorry, your bullet drop um, is in that same mass. So it's a lot bigger than people think. Those bullets are always curving. And we also see monstrous differences sometimes in wind. When there's an eight second shot and you have a constant wind pushing one way, that bullet can be getting pushed a long way by the wind. So we tend to be dialing a long way to get back onto target because of the amount of time where that bullet is traveling through a moving body of air. Anyway, that's um, my video for today. I hope that makes some sense of things with all that little bit of um, definitions and terminology. Um, like I said, hope it makes sense. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for checking in and we'll catch you next time.